my gosh. Um, iCAD. It's Index Card a Day. So it was started by this girl. She goes by the um, the name of Daisy Yellow, and but her real name is Tammy. And she's been doing it for I don't know how many years. And I just like making little pieces of art. I think it's something that I'm going to do, I know for sure, and I'm already getting started. Then there's also a June thing going on, um, ATC card a day. I think it's ATCAD, ATCAD. Anyway, um, anyway, so, and that one was started by Peg Robinson and Chelsea, who are kind of art peeps. So, index cards are just these, you know, little index cards. And I happen to keep these in my studio all the time, the unlined ones, because I just like to use them in things. And you've probably seen me jelly, jelly plate print with them. I put up that video last week with when I was doing the spray painting and I had some index cards in that. So I use them all the time. Now I particularly like the index cards because the paper is thin, and for me, if I'm working on thin paper, well, you know what that means. It becomes a collage. So oh. anyway, I've oh. got my cards ready, my blanks, and the only difference with the ATCs is the size. The index cards are three by five, the ATCs are two and a half by three and a half. But the point is making little pieces of art, and the point is to establish a daily practice. And I think that just nothing could be better for us than to do a daily practice. It helps heal us in so many ways, and I do, do love that. So, if you're watching me regularly and following me here on Facebook and on Instagram, you'll know a few weeks ago I did a bunch of really dribbly things and I posted them. They were kind of like this, but they were actually a lot bigger. They were pretty large. Well, I thought, I wonder if... I started the index cards like that. Wouldn't that be cool? Maybe that would be a good way to start them and to um, instantly get a cool background. So I'm going to show you how I did these and then it takes a little bit for them to dry. So I'm going to come back and we'll embellish one of these. So I'm going to set these aside for a moment and set the stencils aside for a moment and I'm going to put some plastic down. This is just a plastic bag I had that I cut up, but um, I'm gonna use ink so it can be kind of messy. And um, I like to have it on plastic so that I can pick it up and move it. You know what, I've got a tray here. I'm gonna put a tray underneath it so I can definitely move it. And I have selected, I have selected acrylic artist inks because they're super watery, but they're also acrylic, which you know they'll be permanent. You could do this with watercolor. You could water down some acrylics. You could just kind of do whatever you want. I mainly want to do something that's kind of runny and to get this sort of this dripping kind of background. So that's my goal. I've got my iCat, my cards here, my blank index cards, and we'll just start with one of them. And when using inks and so forth, I really don't use too much. I just use some water. Sometimes I'll use a spray bottle. Um, this spray bottle, everybody's going to ask about it. It's on my Amazon shop. It's the fantastic, fantastic spray bottle. But let's just shake one of these up, and then I'll show you one way to get started. And I'll show you a few ways we can do this. All right, so... Let's just hold it up. Somebody actually emailed me a couple weeks ago about drips and they said, your drips are so cool and I can't get my drips to do the same thing. And I thought, huh, that is so interesting because I don't really think of my drips as being extraordinary, but I let them do what they want to do. This is, I just put this in water, and so I'm gonna pull out a little bit of the ink here. You can do this or not. I should have had Nancy Curry come over and help me with this, because she's like the queen of ink, and um, that would have been fun. 
fun, fun. But anyway, you can do anything you want here. You could spritz. I've got my sprayer here. Let's spritz lightly. Oh, that was not lightly. That was a big old spritz. You can get something like that going in the center. You can get this moving around. My goal here is to get some movement from the ink to get some marks and to leave some white background. Those are my main goals here because this is just going to be my background, okay? So I was using a brush. Now you can also, you can tease it out with a skewer. I tend to only use one color when I put this down. The other thing I do though sometimes is I, um, this by the way, somebody commented on the color. This is that To Die For color by Dale Rowney, FW. Antelope is the name of it. And oh my gosh, I have just become totally smitten with this color. I love it so much. All right, the other thing I've done, which I just think it's kind of weird looking, is I've taken this, um, these are the Tim Holtz, they're his metallics the alcohol inks, and I like to just put like one drop in and then let it kind of expand out. Look at that. Oh my gosh, isn't that gratifying to see that on there? I mean, you can put another if you like, but it's just so pretty. And it dries down in its full metallic wonder, so I think that that's kind of pretty. Now this one I would set aside now because for me that's about where I want it to be. I don't need anything else on it for the moment. Let's try a different one. Okay, so let's say you've got ink in a container that it doesn't have the little um, squeezer. Just get one of these pipettes or um, you can get, oh here's one, here's a little ink dropper. You can get these also. Put a couple drops of it up here. I just like that metallic peeking through. It's so amazing. And so you can do something just this simple and create a bunch of them, stick them in a pile when they dry down, and then you're kind of ready to roll, okay? As far as, um, you know, creating your iCADs when the day comes up. I'm gonna add a slight bit of blue to this. So here are these, and I think they're good. I'm going to sit these aside. I'm going to take this tray and sit it on the floor because I'm finished using the inks right now. And then we're going to go back with a couple dry ones, and I'm going to show you how you can just easily, easily, quickly transform them with a stencil. All right, let's start with this blue or the green. All right, I've picked out three colors here that I thought might be kind of cool. I mean, honestly, you could do your own palette any which way. All right, so what I like to do to make quick, quick, cool things is find some stencils that like kind of go together or they look like they go together or something. So do you see what I'm saying about these stencils that are laying out here? Well, they're all linear, first of all. Actually, these are masks, too, to some extent. And they have such interesting shapes and sizes that when you move them around, you're going to get a cool result. So that's why I like working with ones that um, give you an interesting effect like that. Let's start with the green and use this little Trish McKinney. And now I'm changing my ideas about color already. But um, we'll start with the yellow. These are Paper Artsy Fresco Finish Paints. 
which I love, love, love. And I'm gonna start with this one called Haystack. And I'm gonna just stencil around this little McKinney mask. You know, I really don't think I want that peach in here. I do think I want the brown. I'm gonna um, quickly find a different color here. I think I'm gonna go with Tango instead of the, um, the peach. Because I think maybe a little bit earthier is better. So basically, all you do is vary your colors and just use one stencil. Okay, so there is one go. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that already looks pretty cool. Um, however, you can move the stencil. We had it this way to start, remember? You can move it and get a different result. Okay, look at that. That changed everything, right? So now you can take a brown. Usually when I do this, I usually only do two or three colors. I usually start with my lightest color so that it'll peek through the back. And um, I guess you could start with your darkest too. That would be another way to do it. I'm gonna add this darker brown down here on top of this green. But I mean, look how interesting this gets. And I really haven't done much of anything, if you think about it. All I've done was start out with this cool ink-dripped background and then just moved this one little stencil around. And I think it's pretty nice when that happens and you can get something interesting. So there's one, I mean, done, right? Just a few minutes and you've done something interesting. If you want to just take it a step further, you could always cut out little collage parts to put in there, do it kind of a patchwork style. I mean, there's a lot of different um, ways you could do this. Let's start. Very nice. And you just get, I hope that you're getting the benefit of this, the interesting lines. And I mean, you automatically get layers that are, just seem a little more interesting than you might expect, especially considering you made it so lickety split, right? The key is to keep moving and stop thinking okay keep moving stop thinking now let's say that here's two of them done in just a couple of minutes right let's say that and this isn't enough for you you want to take it a step further add a word add a couple of words from a vintage book add another collage part maybe that you have stashed for a rainy day you know pull something out this could still be the start or it could be, you know, the backdrop for um, some cool words. You know, this is a Dina Wakely little uh, tissue, break the rules. Huh, I think I got that one covered. What do you think? So these are just really a great way to kind of get going and get yourself started on something super, super simple. Let's try, we'll do one more. When you use a stencil like this, I'm knocking back some of these whites because they were taking over here in the corners. It can really give you such a lovely effect, you know? And don't really, seriously, don't think about it too much. Just grab whatever you have, any paints you have. Use watercolor if you want. I mean, it doesn't have to be that complicated. Yeah. So you can also, another thing to think of, like let's say you still wanna add more, go back and doodle in some of these sections. 
with your black or your white pens or both. I mean, just the options abound. So I hope this has given you some ideas on how to participate in the index card a day or the ATC a day or just making some more components for your own work or something for a greeting card or who knows what. Thanks for watching. Stencil Girl would love to spark even more of your creativity with technique videos and more. Just click on the links below and you're all ready to stencil.